Yeah. Hello, people. I'm Jabby Kuwait, joined by Char Kirk. Hi. As usual. And we're doing something unusual today. We're trying out a three camera setup with microphones to do a sort of podcast style in this discussion of this film to make it a little bit more relaxed. Um, if you guys don't like this style, just let us know in the comments. If you do like it, let us know in the comments. Uh, but without further ado, we're going to talk about Bavesh Joshi Superhero, the film starring Harsh Vardin Kapoor. We watched it a few days back, and we left a very short review on YouTube. Mm -hmm. It was literally like one, one minute, minute long. Yeah. It's the shortest review I think I've ever done for a movie ever. And because I felt like I had so much to talk about that... I could not compress it down into like a five minute video. Uh -huh. I, I was like, I'm not even going to bother wasting. Like, I just want people to watch this movie. There were some accusations. I don't know if you know this. There's some accusations from people going, you know, why'd you change your icon to be Babesh Joshi? Like, is he yeah. paying you? Are they paying you to yeah, do this? Yeah, I read those comments. And I was like, do you guys realize like they didn't have a marketing budget on this thing? <laughs> like, they, this was such a tiny budget. So like they, if they paid me that'd be awesome but no no one paid me to do that i i actually texted him and i was like is it cool that i do this because i really like the movie <laughs> i sent my youtube i sent my instagram i sent my twitter and he's like that's awesome yeah please thanks oh and so he was very happy about that um and he's sending me the indian cut um yeah we're gonna get that on wednesday oh cool so that we can watch that version and then maybe do another review i don't know uh, I don't even know if anyone's gonna watch this review. Yeah. So. No, let's uh, let's get back on the Skype with uh, Harsh yeah. and uh, and do like a uh, discussion, a breakdown. Yeah. Uh, how do you call it? Like a debriefing. Yeah, a debr yeah, sure. So I don't even know where to start with this, but let's let's kind of go through the film. Just as a reminder for you guys, this is a spoiler review. This is going to reveal a whole bunch of stuff. And so if you haven't watched the movie yet, I would strongly recommend you watch it because we're going to ruin everything right yeah. now. Um, okay, so let's start with the pacing. That was one of the things I mentioned to Harsh was that I thought that the first hour could have been a lot shorter. Yes. Um, and then he, he, he responded as he should. He, you know, he was defending and he goes, you know, well, that, the director was going for a slower pace. Like that was deliberate. And I, I could tell that everything happening in the film was deliberate, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm supposed to like it. Right. Yeah. And I mean, it, it was so different from the very beginning, you yeah. know, all that stuff with Insaf, which was done in a very fun, exciting, colorful, you know, kind of YouTube way where it's like quick cuts. Yeah. And um, I really enjoyed that part. And then suddenly it changed pace yeah um you know which is fine but i just felt like a lot of the exposition stuff um all that backstory stuff was taking so long and i was like yeah i get it yeah. can we there's almost a you when you just said that what hit me was that there's almost a deeper layer to that it's like his life slowed down you True. know the pacing slowed down with his life and then he was about to engage mm -hmm. in a very normal normal lifestyle it, which is what, you know, as us as the audience, we don't want that to happen. <laughs> no, we're like, we just want all the exciting <laughs> yeah. stuff. Where was that fun in soft stuff that was so funny and cool? Yeah, I did appreciate that a lot. I thought that that was, uh, you know, kind of, what do you call it? Uh, perfectly capturing the YouTube yes. atmosphere that kind of edgy, quick cut uh -huh. feeling that you get when you watch YouTube videos. Yeah. I loved Insoff and the way that they were portrayed, like the paper bag thing. Yeah. Uh, before I forget... In soft punch. Yeah, in soft punch. <laughs> before I forget, there was this moment later on in the film when his uh, when, when Harsha's best friend, Bavesh, was yes. by himself trying to help out this guy with the water situation. Uh -huh. And he was sitting in that living room with the bag on his head and he was trying to drink the coffee. I was like, this is such a brilliant... like indie film type yes, moment yes i loved that that was so good you know, i thought it was beautiful i thought yeah. that was great and him like awkwardly trying to drink <laughs> the coffee no i, I like that a lot uh, i like the the design of the bag i love the opening like you said but then it oh, like we lost the light oh okay well can we fix that real quick yeah if we look brighter it's because we just replaced our light <laughs> so um i like the design of the paper bag i love i love the opening and i love I loved what they were doing. Like, they were going after the guys who were cutting down the tree. They were going after the guys who were peeing on the wall. All the stuff they showed us in the commercial, I'm like, this is really fun. Yeah. I like who they're going after because these are things that police probably wouldn't care about. These are things pol police would probably ignore and not, you know, bother to concern themselves with. And yeah. they really showed that the police, as we see in most Indian films, just don't care about anything. They're, they, you know, they're, and the police in this particular instance are being paid off by. Someone, someone who, higher up, you know, like with a, a high up 
politician. Well, a higher politician with vested interest in things going in a corrupt manner, right? Yeah. Because he profits off of it. Um, yeah. And so when it went into the real life stuff, there was this big lull in the film where the main character, uh, who's played by Harsh, is kind of, kind of just settling into adult life. And that chunk of the movie is so long of him basically saying, no, I am not going to help you anymore. Mm-hmm. I'm, what can we do? We're There's nothing that we can actually do to, to help this out. I thought that could have been cut down quite significantly. Yeah. Well, I, I guess because... I mean, it doesn't really come as a surprise that his friend Bavesh yeah. gets killed because at some point as you're watching it and you realize that the main character's name is not Bavesh, yeah. you're like, oh, well, then the inciting incident obviously has to be that his best friend gets killed yeah. and then he's going to go on to become this vigilante. Right. Like, you just know that. But they take so long to set it up. Yeah. It's just kind of like, oh, come, we, we all know. Yeah. And as much as I, I, I love the guy who played his friend Bavesh, yeah. I thought he did a fantastic job acting. In fact, I think all of the acting was really strong, very spot on. I loved the trio of friends that they were. They felt very real. Yeah. Um, I, even as much as I liked him and everything that he was doing and I understood like, you know, he was crusading for this cause and he really believed in it. He was so idealistic, you yeah. know, and um, unlike his other two friends who'd kind of gotten pulled into the corporate rat race right. and given up those childish dreams. But he was still like so committed. Yeah. I'm like. You needed to die sooner. Though, yeah. Dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? But, you know, the, I, I think the journey, what it, what it, what it gained though was a, a sense of a realistic response to all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, I did believe everything that was happening. And I really liked the construction and deconstruction of the main character of how he found his way into this kind of corporate life. And he he had his own morals and he had to sacrifice those morals mm-hmm. and in essence betray his best friend because he decided to go ahead and pay off the cop. You know, that those little moments I, I, I liked a lot. Like even that little moment in the car where you saw him betray himself yeah. and give up his morals, like Harsh did a really good job with the acting in this. I thought he, I thought he carried this movie very very well, and I did see some comments of people going, you know, he did, he's not a good actor. He didn't do a good job, and I I'm, I'm inclined to think that his acting style is very Western friendly. Yes, um, because it's very grounded. It's very real. He's not trying to do a lot. He's not trying to do melodrama. He's just being real in that moment and responding yeah. as any of us would to, in that moment. Like. He he doesn't. Um, he's he doesn't... not emoting. He's just living the life. Exactly, as it were. Yeah. yeah, he's he's um he's he's behaving as my old acting teacher would like to say. He's not acting. He's behaving. Like yeah. he's behaving as that person in the moment. And I I really appreciated his approach to the role. Um, but anyway, back to the story. So when he finally when 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 shit start, finally starts to go awry and he uploads his friend's video to the internet, <gasps> I was I like. It was a little... I was very surprised that he decided to do that. Yeah. You, you needed a moment, though, where the main character does something like, no, don't, but you... Sh-. Like, he, that was a mistake, right? And and your main character needs to make mistakes. So I'm glad he did make that mistake. Uh-huh. Um, because then he's going to pay for that mistake in, in some capacity, right? Very dearly. Very dearly, right. Yeah. I never quite got enough of an overt sense that the main character, Harsh, felt remorse for uploading that video. Oh like, no! I, I definitely no, got that. Well, he though. felt he felt bad that he died. He felt bad. He that felt he, guilty. Did he though? Yes, he did. Okay, I didn't. I didn't know that. Like, I never saw him like go. Man, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> like, no, I, I mean, I don't think he ever said like that exactly. No, he did. But yeah. but like, um, I think there definitely was a sense that he blamed himself for Bavesh dying. Okay. And that's why he took it upon himself. Well, I'm gonna to... watch it again to figure that out. But yeah. like, I didn't quite. I didn't quite get that feeling. Like. I wanted to see that come through, and I never did. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Um. Now, the the way that everything was handled after his death of him like deciding to take on his uh, mm-hmm. best friend's mission and continue under his best friend's name, I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Like just the idea of that, like he's not dead, like that's really scary. You know, that's like kind of a Batman thing where you can't kill this guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
and then um he's learning the martial arts and whatnot in the parkour like i loved that entire month like that's when the movie oh, finally kicked off yeah and when... i do love a good training montage right. it's like rocky right <sighs> and what's great about the training montage here is that it wasn't too short it's mm. like it really spent time walking you through his training process of learning everything because it wasn't like that it was like you really saw him and, you know, advance and, and, and gradually get better. I loved his reaction to when the teacher parkoured into the little yes. tank thing. And he's like, oh, fuck that. And he yeah. just walked away. <laughs> he's like, I'm not going to do it. I thought that was cool. Yeah, that was my favorite part of the training montage. Um, and he was a very imperfect superhero. Yes. Like, he made a lot of mistakes. Um, mistakes to the point that I was like, I don't know why he's standing there still. Like, when he went into the water area to, uh -huh. to, to, um, to set everything on fire... And he sees everything lighting up, and he's just standing there, looking at the fire. And I'm like, dude, why is he not moving? Why, like, you know what's about to yeah, happen, dude? Like, but bail, bust, bust to move out of there, yeah. uh, you know? Uh, and I didn't understand why he was just chilling until the last possible second. But he did have a cool look about him because he's walking with the fire behind oh, him yeah. and whatnot, with the mask and everything. Tough guys walk yeah. away from explosions. Right in slow motion. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and in normal motion, but in right. slow motion, right? Yes. Um, and, and so I like the progression of his outfit and his uh and his gear. Yeah, like he started out with just the thing, and then he stitched together. He sewed in these little lights, uh -huh. and then it became this cooler mask. Like I liked how it advanced over the course of the film. I liked how he did get better as a hero, but like I didn't quite understand his decision when he left the club. Like I liked the whole like get up with yeah, the, yeah. with the bald head and. And his recording, I, I like that that idea a lot, but I didn't understand like when he ran away, why he confronted these guys yeah, and then went to the red light in front of them. Like, I mean, it was definitely a cool moment, no, it was but cool, it didn't yeah. make sense. I didn't understand his, his motive because if he was trying to get away, like that's all he was trying to do. Then he should have just stayed hiding. Yeah. Right. Well, that's what that's what I said to you after we watched it. I was like, why didn't he just take off his costume, change his shirt? This is like Spy One Hundred and One. Right. You like put on a hat, change your shirt, and then just walk. <laughs> right. But then what was cool was he gets to the red light and he doesn't run it. Yes. Because he's got the he's, uh, keeping his integrity. Yeah. Well, you. He's obviously remembering his best friend. Yeah. And. It's weird how you the movie didn't need to say much and you knew exactly why he was doing what he was doing. Yeah. I thought that was so cool. It was a very strong moment. Yeah. Definitely. And then he takes off and it was a really cool motorcycle action sequence. Um, the, the thing with the um, little rocket boost in the motorcycle was kind of predictable. Like I knew exactly what was going to happen yeah. there. Like he was going to run into someone and then it was going to magically work at the last possible second. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, some people were saying in the comments, one person said in the comments that uh, in the comments to the, his interview that we did with him, that his uh, the bad guy wasn't that strong. I actually like the bad guy. Uh, I thought it was a pretty good. Ba I thought they. I thought the both bad guys were actually pretty good. Yeah, because I, I mean they seem realistic to me. Right. Um, those are the real life. Those villains. are the real life bad yeah, guys. Exactly. They're the ones that that mess you up, and they're so hard to defeat because it, like it's like they have their tentacles and everything. Well, they're also using um, the public opinion to their advantage. Exactly, yeah. and like. Using the media and all of that, feeding the media lies, saying, yeah. you know, Vivesh Joshi is the terrorist, he's a bad guy, blah, yeah. blah, blah. And it's like, no, dude, you're the one that's stealing all the water right. and then selling it back to people at a premium. That's that's disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I thought they had some pretty good bad guys in here. I, I thought the way they, like, and I, you know what I especially liked to compliment the whole movie was the music. Yes. The, mu the music was actually really bold. Like, I thought that the music complimented like when the bad guy first shows up and you see his face that the music was very dramatic mm -hmm. but in almost like a classical comic book film sense i thought that was really cool like I, it moved me i thought the music was awesome um like i would buy the soundtrack just to listen to it i thought it, and then i heard some nuances of um han zimmer in there from like dark knight dark uh, or, or batman begins both mm -hmm. you know either one like i heard a couple of nuances of the music in there and i was like i was happy with that kind of tribute um did you enjoy the item number Oh, the dude. <laughs> yeah. That was a very unexpected item number. Yeah, like I was like, what's, what? I wasn't expecting that in this movie. Yeah. It was interesting. It was certainly very different to have like a guy doing the whole sexy dance thing. That scene actually left quite an impression on me because uh, I was like, why is this? It seemed almost surreal. Like yeah. it was a dream. Yeah. Uh, I At first when I was watching it, I was like, why are we? But then 
later on, I actually really appreciated it because in another movie with a lot more money, that wouldn't be where it was. That would be like on the 30th, or the, the roof of some huge office or something like that where they're all celebrating, you know, with the big wigs of, of the city. But like, this is what the film could afford, right? Right. And so I felt like, okay, this is what the bad guys would be doing. While everyone else is suffering, they're having a good time. Yeah, they're having a party. That's that's what that scene said to me. Like, this guy is so lost in his party while other people are suffering deprived of water. Mm-hmm. You know, I thought that was neat. Like, there's a lot of layers to the film if you if you think about yeah. it. Yeah. Um, one scene I want to talk about is that, that first action sequence after he has his costume and he goes to, he ties up the guy and he, he's torturing him kind of to get the, the name out of him. Oh, and yeah, yeah, in, in the guy's apartment, right? That was a very interesting scene it almost reminded me of um i mentioned the movie to you the other day unbreakable with uh-huh. bruce willis like for some reason i got that kind of feeling from it but then like all of that was great and and, and gave me a lot of tension like mm-hmm. in a good way edge of my seat kind of feeling and then he looks at the rope outside and decides to mad max to it like and and i'm like what do you what's the plan man like <laughs> you didn't put that there you I don't understand what you, and he's like trying to kick him, he's trying to kick him away, like, and I say Mad Max because that's exactly what happened at the beginning of Mag, Mad Max. Like, it's a cliff, he's gonna die, and he just jumps to the to this chain, and then they pull him back in, right? Uh-huh. But in this instance, he falls, his, hits his foot on an air conditioner, and then slams back first into the Mini Cooper. Yeah. And and then he gets up and, um, like, he limps, away. he hobbles away, I'm like, all right. <laughs> He's a very real superhero. Like, yeah. you know, he's, there, it's, he's it's, just a regular guy trying to figure it out. Because what I wanted him to do was the classic superhero thing, you know, where it's like, oh, here's a cable. I'm going to now slide down the yeah. cable because I'm so badass and my hands don't burn. Yeah. Um, and then I'm going to run away. But nope. He was like, oh, crap. Right. <laughs> well, it, in that regard, yeah, that was cool. I agree with you. But I was like, I... I don't. He, I don't. I don't think he'd be getting up. I think he'd no, be just. No. Yeah. I thought he was. I thought he was gonna die. I was like, is this the end of the movie? This yeah. is not the movie I signed up for. Yeah. <laughs> I. I mean, you crash from three stories up into a car on your back. Like you're just. You're not moving for a little bit. Like that's yeah. that's a wrap, dude. Yeah. And then he gets up and hobbles off. I'm like, I suppose if there was enough adrenaline in your body, theoretically, you could get back up and and run off. I mean, maybe it wasn't that high. Maybe the air conditioning hitting his foot kind of. Uh, slowed down his momentum into the car but then the martial arts guy shows up and that was a very unexpected surprise like that's the thing that's supposed to happen in this kind of movie Mm -hmm. but because so many unexpected so many realistic things were happening that guy showing up wasn't something I expected he's like young Paduan your sensei is here I'm using like all the wrong references I know but it was was like ha and then the teacher shows up he's like let me let me teach you, yeah. young grasshopper. Let's talk about the uh, the martial arts and the fight scenes real quick. Okay. So I'm going to let you go first while I look up my the text message I sent to Harsh. You oh. talk about your feelings because you, th- you had thoughts on this, even though you're not a martial I know. arts person. I had thoughts on this. So, um, like, I appreciated all the hard work and training that obviously went into this. And like I said, I really enjoyed the training montage. That was cool. But then in the final fight scene, I thought that they had some really great ideas for what they wanted to do. But even for me as a uh, as a novice yeah. in fight scene acting or choreography, yeah. I just felt like either they maybe didn't get the camera angles quite right some of the time or it, they just didn't sell the hits too well yeah. at certain points. Like... I, I didn't buy it. Yeah. I was like, I'm watching a fight choreography or I'm watching a fight scene as opposed to I'm watching a fight. Well, it felt like it a w- rehearsal. Yeah. yeah. Like it, it it was like some kicks weren't extended all the way right. or something. So like, yeah, I just wanted to see, I just wanted to see it look like bam! more visceral. Yeah. As opposed to like, oh, you know, like I'm not really hurting you, but it, it kind of maybe looks cool. Mm hmm. I wanted it to be like, ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so for me, I, I would second a, a number of those notions. But um, I think that there is a combination of things at play here. Um, they were shooting this different from how they normally shoot fight scenes in not just in India, but like in America as well. Mm-hmm. Like normally they shoot a lot tighter and it covers up a lot of that. 
And so there was a lot more room for error here because they were shooting wider. Right. You can see everything happening, which I really appreciate. Mm -hmm. The camera wasn't going crazy and, and on a frenzy in an effort to make the action f compensate uh, for the lack of action on the actors, right? Mm -hmm. um, it was it was just le letting it breathe, like the fight scene between Batman and Bane in Dark Knight Rises. But with that, you have to do more on the performance side. And I don't know what was going on, but like th there was misses or it wasn't quite connecting. It didn't feel as, as you know, powerful. Yeah. And there's two ways they could have fixed that. A, they could have undercranked, shot it at a lower frame rate so that it feels faster. Uh, B, they could have sped it up in post. And I don't know why they didn't. It was shot on digital and they edited it in Final Cut. So I'm not sure why they could not speed that up and, and you know. Just give it a bit more punch, right? Yeah. I mean, even when they shot like The Matrix, I think they shot it at 22 frames a second for the fight scenes. Those two frames makes a world of difference in, in terms of that impact, that right. feeling. That energy. Yeah. If you go back and watch something like Iron Monkey, it looks really bad. Like, it's really <laughs> sped up. And so... I think that it kind of speaks to the director wanting it to feel real, mm -hmm. but like in his effort to make it feel real, it felt artificial in those instances specifically. Yeah, that's interesting that you say that, but yeah, that that totally makes sense. Yeah, uh, the the very first real martial arts action scene we saw, besides the opening, was with Bavesh, the actual Bavesh before he dies. Yeah, and he leaps off a truck and punches a guy, and I was like. Where did this come from? <laughs> and then they justify it. They explain it. But like, I did have a thought. I'm like, why does he have this power? Oh, I knew. He he just, he literally just got beat up by a bunch of dudes. He's got a cast on. I can only attribute that to, or chuck that up to adrenaline. That's it. Like, he knows no. he's going to die. So, what? He'd been training the whole time. No, I, I, I get that. They justified it with that. No, but I knew that from the start, though. Oh, I didn't I know I knew that. Because, like, from the very beginning when the two of them went to a karate class or mm. kung fu class or whatever the hell it was, um, I was like, ah, oh, I bet he's still training. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, yes. Yeah. I, and I like that little opening to the training with the teacher, the push-ups, <laughs> them walking across. I thought that was really interesting. <laughs> and then with the kids, it was cute. Uh, let's see. So here's what I said to Harsh on a text message because he wanted to know my feelings. I really, like the, I really like the story, acting, the tone. I really like the tone a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, the general shooting style and framing, color style, the music, all on point. The first half was a little long. Fight scenes had some issues. While I vastly prefer how Bavesh Joshi was shot over most fight scenes I see, even in the States, it needed to be sped up at certain points, either undercranked when shot up or sped up in editing, like I just said. Mm -hmm. uh, some hits didn't connect, but I was moved by the story and characters that I forgave that. I was a little confused by a few decisions Siku made. Oh, that's his name, Siku. Uh, but loved that he was very human and the story was very human. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what appealed to me more than anything. Uh, I, even at the end with um, the, the, the cop who shot him, like even he had some layers in there. Yeah. Right? Like, and you and I both knew exactly why he did what he did because he felt bad. Like he knew he's supposed to be a cop. He's supposed to be, you know, we're taking care of the people and here he is doing this corrupt thing. And he didn't even have the heart to shoot him in the face. Mm -hmm. Like he had to shoot him somewhere else. And it, it you know, ended up working against him. But like he shouldn't have been corrupt to begin with. So, um, yeah. But uh, I liked all the little nuanced layers in there with each of these people. Like everybody felt, in my opinion, everybody felt three-dimensional. Yeah. You know, uh, we have failed to mention the, uh, the sidekick, essentially, who is from uh, Baked season one yeah. uh, I, don't, I don't know if he's in season two i haven't watched season two yet but like he was in there he was he did a pretty good job of bringing levity to it he did yeah. he did i loved i loved that trio no yeah. i thought they were so awesome i loved how um what's his name ashish rajat. Verma. yes uh, right he plays rajat yeah so ashish i really liked uh ashish verma's performance because he just seemed like that nerdy friend mm -hmm. that we all have you know um I, I liked I liked that he was a little bit of an outsider and that he was kind of in awe of the charisma and personality of Siku and Bavesh mm -hmm. because they were such like larger than life characters, you yeah. know, and um, I kind of thought that maybe it would be one of those situations where they would he was telling the story from his eyes the whole time because it did seem it, like it, it was going to do that. It kind of started out that yeah. way with like the filming and stuff and then it kind of abandoned that and then 
came back to it a little bit. Yeah. Um. So I liked that, and I really liked um. What's the name of the guy who? Bavesh, the real Bavesh. You liked yeah, his performance. Yeah, I liked his performance yeah. a lot. I thought he was. I thought he was very good as well. So all around, very strong acting. Yeah. yeah. Um. W- one of the things that came up was that in my exchange with Harsh was that he, this really is a story about the everyman becoming a superhero, being mm-hmm. thrust into these yes. huge circumstances. Uh, I, I, th- I think what I said to him here was, I think that the everyman aspect is what makes the story so compelling for me. He really does feel like a normal guy thrust into an incredibly huge situation. Um, yeah. Um, and that's, that's the thing about the story and the message as well, because as we were nearing the conclusion of the film, it started to feel really bleak because I thought, oh man... Now Siku's like incapacitated yeah. and like it just feels really depressing. They didn't get the bad guy. Yeah. This really sucks. Like I don't know how mm. I'm supposed to feel about this. And then they turned it around yeah. and they made it really they made me feel really uplifted because yeah. it because it was about what you said like you be the change. Mm-hmm. Like the Vesh Joshi superhero, he's he's an everyman and he's making a change mm-hmm. and we all can do that as well yeah. um in our own lives with small actions large actions or whatever so i thought that was a really uplifting message yeah i really liked the movie a lot i thought yeah. the director did a very good job here i thought the writing was cool I, mm-hmm. I mean obviously like we said there were some moments that were just a little bit questionable like i didn't understand why but i'm gonna watch it a second time and maybe i'll feel different uh overall i thought that the film was very strong it moved me enough to want to change my icon um i thought that it, it was it was definitely like speaking back to that everyman thing um i think that You know, unlike Rustum, the film wasn't like championing these people from the beginning. It felt like real people and you were kind of living this life with them. And I really like, you know, that style of that that approach. But uh, overall, like I gave it a four out of five on Stardust. I I had issues, but I really tremendously like this film. One more thing I want to add is that I thought the characters were really great. Not just the acting, but just the characters itself. Because I thought that they had very strong archetypes. Absolutely. um, And very recognizable, which makes for an excellent story. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, you guys, thanks so much for hanging out with us. Really appreciate it. We have so much more that we'd love to talk about, but we're going to stop this here. Uh, Please check out the film if you haven't already. If you've watched this much of it, I'm... You've ruined it for yourself. But anyway, <laughs> check it out if you haven't already. Uh, follow us on the social media. I'm Jabby Koi. This is Achara Kirk. Peace out.